Hey everybody, JC here with another TNI tour review. And for today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at the brand new Spawn Rebirth figure from McFarlane Toys. Now this figure is part of the new Color Top series from McFarlane, the Blue series to be specific. This is also the Toys R Us exclusive version, the hamburger head version. There is a regular figure with just the normal mast head that's being released as well in the series. But this one is a Toys R Us exclusive. It comes packaged in a window box. The figure's clearly displayed. Up at the top, you've got the Spawn logo and the Color Tops logo and the blue coloring on the box. Then down below, you have some artwork for the character and the name. Off to the side, you again just have the Spawn logo and then on the back of the packaging, we have a look at the actual figure, and it tells us this is figure number 11 in the series. All right, let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside the packaging along with the other contents. Now, first of all, the figure comes with a stand. We see this with all the color top figures that McFarlane's been releasing. It's just black plastic, and then you've got the Spawn logo on the front. You've got one peg on the stand, which is good because the figure only has one peg hole, and then you can just stand it on there. You don't really need the stand with this one. The figure stands pretty good on its own power, but if you just want that kind of display base with the name and everything, it's kind of cool that they've given Giving it to you. So the figure comes with two different weapons. He gets this rifle and you've got this metallic gun gray silver on it with some wash effect to give it a worn look. And the sculpting detail is pretty nice on it. It is just kind of hollow plastic, so it's pretty light. And then you also get a pistol, which also has the same kind of gun gray, metallic silver, and the wash effect and everything. And again, nice sculpting detail. You've got the little magazine and everything. So I like the sculpting detail on this pistol, even more so than the rifle. So the rifle you can get really in either hand. You can get it in the left hand if you want to, but it's really made more to be held in the right hand. It's better suited for that. And he does have a little tr trigger finger, so you have to kind of wedge the handle in there, but you can get it so he holds it nice and tight with the trigger finger. And again, it's really meant to be held in the right hand. And then the pistol you can't fit in the right hand, so the only hand you can get the pistol in because the handle of the pistol is too wide to go in the right hand. So you can only get that one in the left hand. Now one thing I want to caution you on is the plastic for the fingers is very hard and stiff so getting the weapons in there can be a bit of a challenge you may want to try and take a hair dryer to it and then also the the pegs for the joints on the hands seem to be made with a very kind of brittle plastic so you don't want to put too much pressure on those hands because you could snap those joints off pretty easily it seems like now for the figure itself like we've seen with most McFarlane figures the paint applications and the sculpting detail on this figure is very nice the hamburger head, you've got the kind of all shriveled up, burnt off skin, which I think looks good. And you've got some darker browns and, and black colors mixed in. And then he's got this kind of uh, red color on the top of his forehead. And then he's got the kind of light greenish eyes that almost look like kind of glow in the dark. And I like the sculpting of the teeth and the holes for his nose, I think look good. And then he's got the cape, which is done with a pretty hard vinyl type material. There's not a lot of flexibility with this cape, but he's got the really uh, big collar that sticks up. And then he's got the little chain that's sculpted. And this is again just done with a vinyl, the chain is just done with a vinyl material. And then you've got some wash effect in the cape, so it looks like it's worn and dirty. So I like that with the red. And you've got some uh, kind of tatteredness in the little bent up uh, parts of the cape, like you always see in the comic book here at the bottom. So I think that looks good. He's got the bullets that go across his chest, and this is a separate piece. You could probably find a way to get this off if you wanted to. And this is done with a kind of a, a metallic bronze type color. And again, you've got some wash effect on the bullets. So nice sculpting and paint applications on that. And then he's got the little spikes like here on his uh, bicep and on his wrist. And then he's got more spikes on his right hand or right arm. And these are done with a pretty hard plastic and a metallic silver. And then he's got the costume, you've just got the black, and I like, you can even see some like veins in his shoulder here, so I like that sculpting detail. And his belt, you've got some nice sculpting detail with the pouches on his belt. He's got the little metallic gold for the buttons on the belt, and then he's got this metallic skull, silver skull on it for his belt buckle. And then he's got these chains that stick out from the belt buckle, and these are done, again, done with that kind of vinyl material. 
and they go behind the figure under the cape so nice detailing there and then again he's got the little spikes on his lower legs so the other thing that you would tend to expect with a McFarlane figure is a lack of articulation and unfortunately this figure also delivers in that department so you can really only turn the head a little bit you can turn it left and right but there's no pivot and there's no back or forth movement with the head there's no shoulder articulation there's no midsection articulation you do have a little bit of elbow articulation so it's a single hinged elbow and really you can only move the arms up and down a little bit that's about as much as you can move it basically the arms are meant to be in a bent position you can also rotate there and you can rotate at the wrist there's no hinges on the hands but you do have rotation same with the left arm you've got a little bit of up and down movement with the arm and you've got some rotation there but that's about it and then you've also got the rotation on the wrist on the left hand as well there is a, a waist swivel so you can rotate there at the midsection a little bit. Now again, the only a little bit, the cape kind of limits that movement, so you don't really get a whole lot of rotation there. There's no leg articulation at the crotch, and there's no knee articulation. Now you do have a little bit, it looks like a, a swivel here under this pouch on his leg. So you can rotate the leg a little bit there. Um, the right leg does not have any kind of thigh swivel at all. And then both do have uh, swivels at the boot cuff, so you can rotate the lower legs a little bit there at the boot cuff for both, both legs. And then neither, one, neither leg has ankle articulation for the feet. And you have one peg hole on the bottom of the this right This figure foot. stands, if you count to the top of his head, about seven inches tall. And then if you count to the tips of his cape, it's a little bit over eight inches tall. Here's a comparison with the DC collectible seven inch scale Arkham Batman figure. And just for fun, here's a comparison with a couple other seven inch scale figures. So we've got the NECA Toys Ultimate Freddy Cougar figure and then the Diamond Select Toys Select Silent Bob figure. Okay, so that's my review. So believe it or not, this is actually my first and only Spawn figure I've ever owned. And like I generally say with McFarlane figures, I think if you're just looking for something to put on your shelf that looks good, something with a lot of sculpting detail and paint applications, this is definitely a figure that you'll probably want to add to your collection. However, if you are somebody who likes a lot of articulation and posability with your figure, this is one you'll definitely want to pass on. So this figure is available now. As I mentioned before, it is a Toys R Us exclusive. We'll have a full image gallery up at toynewseye.com. There'll be a link in the video description below. As always, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. Also, if you haven't already, please follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I'll have links to those in the video description as well. And until next time, I'll catch you later.